Welcome to Underground Storage Tank Compliance, where we talk about all things gas station, focusing mostly on underground storage tank compliance as related to 40 CFR 280 and the EPA UST regulations. This is going to be our section on tanks. This is the introduction to tanks. This is Tanks 101. So what we're going to start with today is our basic underground storage tank information. Uh, underground storage tanks are most often abbreviated UST. That's what uh, UST stands for. The def we're going to cover what the definition of a UST is, how they are oriented when they're installed, uh, how big are these tanks usually, what are they made out of, what's the materials that they're usually manufactured out of, and just more on the basics of underground storage tanks. The EPA definition of a UST is any tank that has 10% or more of their volume below the surface of the ground. This takes into consideration piping also, which you see the next section. Uh, this includes the tanks, the underground piping, underground equipment, and the containment systems associated with the UST. Uh, if there's more than 10% of the volume of the tank in the piping, that makes it a UST. So if you have an abnormally long piping run, you could actually have a tank that wouldn't normally be considered a UST that now would be a UST. I've never seen that happen, but it's theoretical possible. Um, the federal UST regulations only apply to UST systems storing either petroleum or certain hazardous substances. So these don't apply to water tanks. That, and there's a lot of other um, caveats that it, where they don't apply the UST regulations to but we're going to focus mostly on gas stations. Um, heating oil tanks are considered USTs. A lot of the northern cities and northeastern cities in the United States houses have tanks that could be considered USTs. Um, usually a, a UST is situated horizontally, so the ends of it are, are facing either north, south, east, west, and they're installed underground, usually about six feet underground. Uh, there's required depths for these installations, but that's a different topic, a more advanced topic. These tanks, they can range in size from 50 gallons, say a home heating uh, UST, to up to 100,000, maybe more gallons. Uh, there's some out in Hawaii that the Navy has that are huge, they're a million gallon plus tanks that are underground. Uh, but the UST regulations apply to any tank over 110 gallons. So unless it's a farm tank, then the limit is set at 1,100 gallons. So there are some caveats. I'm just trying to give you the basics, not going to depth. We'll do that in future issues. Uh, what are these USTs made out of? Cardboard? <laughs> no. Wood? Actually, before the regulations came into existence, wood was a common way that they would uh, put these tanks in the ground. They would just make barrels, basically, put those in the ground, and they could fill them up with gas, oil, whatever. Uh, the common theory was oil came from the ground, so why is it bad to let oil go back in the ground? Now we know how... Uh, Contamination from oil can um, harm water supplies and it can harm human health. So we stopped doing that around, well, for sure, the regulations came into effect in the 80s. Bear steel, bear steel was commonplace up until the late 80s. In 1988, they came out with the first real federal EPA UST regulations and they stopped allowing bear steel because steel rusts under the ground. So when steel rusts, it holes form in it, and so it doesn't work so well. Uh, clad steel tanks, you can use those. A jacketed steel tank, you can use those. Um, fiberglass tanks, yes, fiberglass tanks are commonplace. Uh, so these are the more common types of tanks that you'll see nowadays. Tanks can be single-walled. So they can just be one wall. Uh, but the new regulations that came into effect in 2015, for federal regulations, they have to be double walled now. Um, some states already required them to be double walled. Uh, for instance, California, Texas, they had regulations in place, state regulations that said that these tanks had to be double walled. 
prior to the 2015 regulations that EPA came out with. They can actually be triple well tanks. There are places with hazardous substances that the tanks have to be triple walled so that they can't, they make sure they don't leak, hopefully. Uh, and they can even have more, I mean, the number of walls is only limited by your imagination. So there can be four or five, six walls on a tank. Uh, they can be compartmentalized. Compartmentalized means that you have a tank that they've split it into sections. So they put some kind of wall or bulkhead in the tank so that it portions it out so you have like a 20,000 gallon tank and one end of it is going to be 12,000 the other end is going to be 8,000 and you can store two different products in that same tank and you'll see that a lot with the delivery drivers their tanks are usually compartmentalized like that they call those uh, split tanks comp compartmentalized tanks uh, there's different words for it um, they can be internally lined that's not allowed so much anymore but back in the 80s when they first came out with the regulations a lot of those tanks they went in and just sprayed liners on the inside of the steel tanks to stop the rusting on those tanks or they can build a whole new tank inside an old tank and there's some companies out there that will go in and they'll construct a tank in a tank so that you don't have to remove your old tank you can just build a tank in a tank of course it lowers your volume of fuel you can store but it's another way of I don't know if it's any cheaper or not I don't know the price of it but it's an, an approach that you can take if you don't want to remove your old tanks so this is an example of a single wall tank it's just a single wall and then you put the product inside this tank and you fill it up with gasoline or whatever just you got gas all the way up to however high you go and in future sessions we'll talk about how high you can go hopefully that doesn't look like anything but just for example you can put product in there and or you can do double wall tanks and this is basically what you have as a double wall tank and the space between the two walls is either called your angular space or your interstitial space or triple wall tanks and it's the same concept you just have a tank and a tank when you're looking at a steel tank versus a fiberglass tank, those are the two major materials that most gas stations tanks are built out of. Uh, I would say all, but I'm sure there's probably an exception out there I'm not aware of. Steel tanks, if you see a steel tank either out of the ground or in the ground, if it has flat ends, it's a steel tank. You can see in this uh, tank up here, the flat end on the tank right here so that shows you right off it's a steel tank and then if it has a rounded end or a convex end on the end of it like these right here that tells you it's a fiberglass tank so it's just a quick and easy way you can tell when you're looking at a tank either in drawings or in real life and tell if they're a fiberglass or a steel tank. And the fiberglass tanks also usually have these ridges in them. So you'll see in future pictures that they have ridges along the length of them, and those are for stability and strength. This is what a double wall steel tank usually looks like. There's your external wall. There's sometimes there's some type of material in here, sometimes it's just open space and then your interior wall and that space is usually monitored through some method this is a double wall fiberglass tank and it's just the exact same thing inner wall uh, primary tank secondary tank around the outside and these are some views I always had trouble picturing what the interstitial space for a fiberglass tank looked like you can see here there's kind of a mesh material that goes between the primary tank and the secondary tank and that's to allow any liquids to move between the two tanks so that it can be detected through some your re release detection device you can see over here in the other tanks it's the same concept you just have an interior wall and an exterior wall and a space between that you can monitor so you can catch any leaks 
Steel tanks, they come in all sizes and there's many, many different manufacturers. Usually they're listed on the Steel Tank Institute website. You can find all the information you need to about steel tanks there. And these are usually, that's what that little icon up in the corner of that is, the Steel Tank Institute icon. Um, you can look up on their website, Steel Tank Institute, and see all the different types of steel tanks there are. Usually the interior of the steel and the exterior is made of some type of material that won't rust. Uh, I'm trying not to get too in depth about all these because we're going to go into further depth in the future sessions. So we're just trying to cover the basics. This is another uh, model of steel tank. Um, you'll see them in different colors, different manufacturers stick with different colors, modern welding. They do red on a lot of their tanks. Um, you can see written on it, it says double wall. On the end, you'll see uh, how much the volume of the tank holds. And then Act 100 is just a, a model. It's, um, I forgot what it's called, what it stands for, but it's something we'll cover later anyway. And these are double wall steel tanks, you know, because it's engraved on the tanks. Here's another picture of a, a Type 3. And these are Steel Tank Institute. And the P3 stands for they prevent corrosion three different ways. Um, and we'll, that's not worth talking about here because that's more than basic information. But again, you can see the interstitial space right here. You can see how the two tanks are separated. And this steel pipe here on the end is how they monitor the interstitial space on a steel tank, this type of steel tank. And here's what it looks like in real life. You can see the monitoring pipe goes up and down here. And you usually just have different ways you can monitor to see if this is leaking or not. And these are anodes on the end to prevent the tank from rusting. These are a brand. Xerces is the manufacturer. And these are double walled for FRP or fiberglass tanks. FRP is abbreviation for fiberglass used. You'll see that used a lot. And these are 20,000 gallon tanks. You can see down here on the end. It's got a sticker on it. It tells you exactly how big these tanks are. And again, these are containment solutions. They are double oil tanks. This one's 12,000 gallons. This one's 12,000 gallons. And usually they're white. The Xerxes are almost always that dark red, burgundy for uh, gas stations. And here's samples of different USTs in different environments. You can see that they come in different shapes, sizes. But once you get used to seeing them, you, you'll be able to identify Maroon, Xerxes, fiberglass. You can see the ribs on the outside. See the rounding on the end. You know they're fiberglass. You know by the red color, they're Xerxes. This one, you can tell by the red, plus the fact it's written on the side that these are modern welding. Uh, steel tanks, they're clad tanks. You can't tell by looking if they're single wall or double wall. Um, if you really examine it closely, you might be able to, but just by first glance, they're a little difficult to tell. Uh, these down here in the bottom are double wall fiberglass Xerxes tanks. And then you just have a bare steel tank over here on the top left with no cathodic protection. And you have double wall fiberglass clad steel tank and has anodes on it. So in summary, these are EPA regulations. Um, so 10% of volume below ground, over 1,100 gallons or for a farm over 110 gallons for just any other tank. They can be made out of steel. They can be made out of fiberglass. They can be steel that's covered with some type of fiberglass or um, rubberish. It's not rubber. It's another, I forgot what it's called exactly, polyethylene coating, something like that. They can be double walled or more. They have to be double walled or more nowadays for gas stations so that they don't it's harder for them to release to the environment. So if you like this kind of video and you want to know more about underground storage tank compliance, you can follow this. I'll be posting more underground storage tank compliance type videos. You can 
subscribe to it. You can like it. I hope you like it. And if you have any ideas for things that I can cover in future videos, then let me know. My information is there. You can join us on LinkedIn. We have a USD compliance site on LinkedIn that you are welcome to come and join and talk more about underground storage tanks and gas stations and UST compliance. And I look forward to seeing you there. And hopefully you guys will come back for the next episode of this. Thank you.